Yo, what's going on you guys? This is your boy RBG, aka The Random Black Gamer, bringing you another update on Transformers Reactivate. And it's been a little over 24 hours since I made that last video covering the gameplay and the game modes, which once again, I gotta give a major shout out to RoboGamer1HD for that because he was the one who brought those details. And just like in my last video, I'm gonna be referencing him for this one because he just dropped some things that correlate to what was revealed by Hasbro themselves. As you guys know, I have said this time and time again, when it comes to Hasbro, they're all about marketing and they want to make sure that anything that they have in terms of Transformers media it's brought out simultaneously to coincide with their toys it's all about that brand synergy and they make it a point to have everything ready to go once it's time to give a big reveal and this is one of the reasons why splash damage has been so quiet in regards to any kind of updates or news on Transformers reactivate at the end of the day this is Hasbro's property and they have the final say so on when splash damage can talk and I know you guys have been stressing how this has been the bane of your existence because it's been almost a year since we got that reveal trailer and yeah i understand the frustration like some of you guys are saying that this wasn't the case when it came to the cybertron games but it kind of was because hasbro released toys alongside those video games as well if you guys remember back when we got that big reveal for transformers fall of cybertron we also got the unveiling of the transformers generations toy line which featured characters from the game such as bruticus optimus prime jazz and shockwave and hasbro announced that the toy line will be released on August 21st, 2012, which was the same time the game released over here in the US. So that's always been a thing, guys. The only difference here is that Transformers War for Cybertron and Fall of Cybertron weren't in this development purgatory limbo state, but Transformers Reactivate has. Like, it's been in the development oven for quite some time because it's had to shift between different studios. And we've actually been privy to seeing that evolution, right? Because over time, we've gotten the leaks for the toys and we've seen how the box art is that features the name Transformers Rise. We had heard that there was going to be the official name for the game, but it ultimately became Transformers Reactivate. And that bit of information right there is the perfect segue to get into what I really want to talk about, and that's the official revealing from Hasbro themselves in regards to these toys. They now have come repackaged with the actual name Transformers Reactivate, as opposed to the original name, that being Transformers Rise. On Tuesday, the official Hasbro Pulse YouTube channel hosted a fan stream where we got the official unveiling of the two packs featuring Optimus Prime and Soundwave and Bumblebee and Starscream. And this isn't really anything new, right? Like, we knew that these guys were coming out in the pipeline based on all the various leaks that we had seen, but it's great to hear this come straight from the source's mouth as opposed to just various leaks and us content creators, because it just shows that, yeah, they are readying up to actually reveal more in terms of the game associated with these products. And as I've noticed, some things have changed while others have remained the same. I think the design schematics of the box art looks relatively similar to what we got with the Rise box art with a few key differences here and there. You still get these awesome CG rendered headshots of the characters at the upper right and left hand corner of the box along with their names. But instead of just featuring the vehicle form like they did on the old promotional material, they're actually featuring the robot and vehicle forms. And I'm pretty sure there are other key differences too. Like I also noticed that they don't feature the name of Transformers Reactivate at the top of the box and cyberglyphics like they did for Transformers Rise, and the little design panels now feature this more grayish metallic look as opposed to the blue look that they had on the old packaging. But everything else for the most part is pretty much the same. The CG renders are basically just lifted from the old packaging, like you can even see the insignias of the teams they're associated with behind their portraits. Over on the back of the packaging we see what looks to be gameplay or a general idea of what the gameplay will consist of, and you guys have pretty much heard my theories on this. I think this is going to be a two-player online co-op where you pick two characters from both factions and pair them together. The fact that we're getting these two-pack toys are indicative of that and we've already kind of seen that alluded to, right? Because we got that leaked cutscene that featured Ratchet on the medical side for the Autobots who was working in tandem with Shockwave from the Decepticons. I'm pretty sure there's nothing more that makes their circuit sizzle than actually working with their enemies, but they're gonna absolutely have to if they want to defeat this big major threat, that being the Legion. And since since we're bringing up the Legion, I think it's important to point out something else that has been changed, because the retailers, they've also changed up their details pertaining to these figures. Originally when we got the leaks for the Rise versions of the toys, they talked about the Quintessons being the main villains that the Autobots and Decepticons had to stop. And I thought that they were going to play a part into this, I thought they were like the big baddies behind the Legion attack, and I still think that's a possibility, but this time the details don't mention them at all. Like the previous description specifically said when New York is attacked by the 
quintessenced and unlikely alliance is forged between the Autobots and Decepticons. But this new updated description reads, when a new threat to humanity arrives, Earth's last hope is the Autobots. And I kind of find it a bit funny that it's been more simplified than what it originally was because for the most part, it was dead on when we got that first description. Like the unlikely alliance between the Decepticons and the Autobots was going to be one of those major story aspects. But this time it just says the Autobots are the human's last hope. Which I guess you can say that's a true statement. Like the Autobots are the good guys and maybe that's a future indication that we will see a betrayal between the Decepticons when they just turn coat and go into business for themselves. But for the most part, everything has pretty much remained the same. Like I think one of the more interesting aspects is the fact that we have characters that are polar opposites. But there are little similarities in terms of their position slash roles in these team ups. Like you have the leader of the Autobots teaming up with a guy who's usually loyal to the leader of the Decepticons and I can't wait to see how their relationship dynamic goes like I'm pretty sure that there's a high probability that they could hate each other's guts even more but I also think that there's a small chance that they could actually develop a respect for one another like these are the things that I want to see explored in terms of the Transformer stories that we really don't get to see that often unless we read the comics but moving on we got to talk about this new leaked art that was brought to us courtesy of RoboGamer1 HD this guy he just continued to drop all these different things to kind of aid splash damage in their marketing material because for whatever reason they ain't dropping none of these things and this right here kind of associates what we talked about today which is Soundwave. We know this character he is very cool he's usually the cassette player but since mobility is an absolute must in these times of chaos he's taking on an SUV alt mode and this kind of puts me in the mind of his alt mode from that Chinese exclusive Transformers online game that was cancelled all those years ago. It's Except this time, instead of having the big subwoofers at the top to kind of give a reference to his old alt mode, he now has two blasters. He has the concussion blaster, which is his signature weapon, and the sonic cannon, which is a weapon that'll rest on his right shoulder while he's in his robot mode. And I already know there are going to be a lot of g wanners who aren't happy about this so-called cannon that he now has, because if I'm not mistaken, that really wasn't a weapon in the original lore. It was a high amplification directional radio wave sensor. But I like to think that Soundwave knew that the stakes are higher this time around and he had to double his firepower so he just upgraded that sensor to a cannon. Like there's always time for change and I think they're gonna need it when they go up against the Legion. But anyways when it comes to the Autobot leader Optimus Prime he's gonna be sporting his usual artillery which consists of an ion blaster and his signature Energon axe. And as you can see while he's in his truck mode he can actually sport the ion blaster on the side and use that which is dope. I'm not sure if it's gonna be that way in the game but I sure hope so because it would be cool to actually use his signature weapon while he's in his vehicle form. Anyways we gotta talk about this awesome CG render that we got courtesy of my man RoboGamer1 HD where it shows Soundwave in his robot mode. A while back we got these kind of things for characters such as Optimus Prime, Megatron, and Bumblebee but we haven't really seen them for other characters so it feels like a breath of fresh air that we're seeing it for more characters such as Soundwave and once again this is another great looking model I think it has a lot of detail and would be a worthy fit if they wanted to utilize it in a live action kind of setting you see the wear and tear on his body like all the different dirt spackles and you see bits of rust here and there and I also like on the cassette part of his chest you can see that the glass has seen better days like it's cracked it has holes in it and it just seems like he's been through it man for his vehicle mode we see even more damage but we see that post-apocalyptic design motif continue where they have all these different peripherals that'll aid them on the battlefield similar to bumblebee he has those rails on his bumper and i absolutely love that they gave him these vented windows it kind of gives off a very mad max type of vibe and something else that you'll notice is that he has a towing hook on the front of his bumper which leads me to believe that you'll be utilizing it to assist your partner like i can see optimus prime getting stuck in this location Location and you have to use the towing hook to pull him out or something like that you know my imagination is just going wild with all these different details man but anyways we got to talk about sound waves familiars because as you know he doesn't go along when he enters the battlefield he brings along a few of his small friends to aid him and RoboGamer1HD provided one of those friends in the form of Laserbeak 
a mini Decepticon bot that specializes in getting in tight places. As you can see, he's going to be sporting his signature G1 mode and also his cassette alt mode. So I can't wait to see how that's going to look in game. And RoboGamer1 HD mentioned that there's more where that came from. Like we could possibly be seeing Ravage, Frenzy, and Rumble, but he didn't disclose if that's going to be a possibility and we'll have to wait to see more. But anyways, I know you guys are probably asking the big question and that's when we're going to see another trailer because it's almost been a year since we got that and as i mentioned earlier since these toys have officially been revealed by the official source that being hasbro then a new trailer shouldn't be that far over the horizon and i gotta be honest with you guys i still have no idea on when we could be seeing that let alone when we'll get a release date for this thing but apparently these toys are supposed to be dropping in february of next year i'm not sure if that's a placeholder date but if it is an official date which these toys are going to drop in i will say that we could be looking at another trailer sometime this month or maybe maybe in December or January, but I'm gonna go ahead and say December because by the time that month hits, it'll officially be the one year anniversary of the reveal trailer. And I think that would be a fitting time to drop a new follow-up gameplay trailer or something like that. But anyways, that's all the news I got for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed this video because I had a blast making it as always. I'm thinking that the official reveal for these toys is a telltale sign that Hasbro and Splash Damage are ready to go on a marketing frenzy and we'll be getting that game play trailer real soon but what are you guys thoughts on this are you happy with these new toys do you think putting them in a two pack warrants the 62 dollar price tag let me know in the comment section below as always i asked you like or dislike the video it doesn't have to be a thumbs up it can be a thumbs down but if you truly enjoyed this video it would help me out tremendously if you shared it with all your friends and followers on all the different social media outlets sharing really makes a difference but once again this is your boy rbg aka the random black gamer signing out on another video i'll catch you guys later Peace out. As a successful YouTube user, I often get questions asking what I use to get my videos tons of views. And the answer to that is TubeBuddy. This thing has helped me take my channel to the next level in ways I never imagined. It's a browser extension that helps new and experienced YouTubers grow fast and optimize their channels. I've been using this extension for years and it's constantly getting updated with new features, like the SEO tool that helps me come up with the perfect title, description, and tags to get more people to click on my videos. It even provides you with analytics besides your videos to see how much traffic your video is generating from various social media sites. The extension is absolutely free, but as a special offer, we're giving a 50% discount for channels that have less than a thousand subscribers that purchase the Pro Upgrade. All you have to do is enter in the code RISINGSTARBUDDY. So if you're interested in starting a YouTube channel or taking your content to the next level, download the extension now. You can do so by clicking on this link that will be provided in the description of this video. Yeah!